Okay. Today's topic, well, this chapter is about the differential equation. We had differential equation from BC before, but that's what's called the first order. You don't have second derivative. Let's, let me just show you the typical example. Something like this, second derivative. You know what I'm saying? So second order differential equation. So you have the sec y is a function of x, as you can see. Final answer will be this. But second derivative and the first derivative and the y itself mixed up. Okay? So that's second order differential equation. For now, we'll have it easy. This side will be zero. But generally, there is some kind of function of x here. Okay? So when we have zero here, it's called the homogeneous differential equation. Okay? And once we have some kind of function on the other side, it complicates. Okay? That's tomorrow, so the next section, whenever we get to it. Okay, so easiest case is homogeneous differential equation. So what we have is y double prime second derivative of y, y being the function of x. And then from calculus BC, you guys know that solutions to differential equation is function, isn't it? Y is function of x. Get it? As you can see, looking at the solution, right? E to be something, e to be something, x, x. So y second derivative, first derivative, with some kind of constant coefficients in the front, right? You could have two, three, six, whatever. And then the other side is zero. And the next section, we're going to put another function of x on this side, okay? Baby steps. So this is the thing that we are going to deal with today, constant coefficients, okay? But let me just briefly walk you through, because when you take the ordinary, this is known as ODE, ordinary differential equation class in college, what they might look like. If we I go backwards, so this is constant coefficients, but we may not have some so nice constant coefficient. We might have some kind of function of x, function of x, and function of x multiplied in front of those y double prime, y prime, and y. You know what I'm saying? That's really complicated. Okay, that's way over, over beyond the scope of this course, so we won't be doing it, but that's generally what ODE looks like. And then, in order to complicate the matter, this right-hand side is not necessarily zero. It's another function of x. So this is a general ODE, second order. And then when you go to college and take ODE class, this is mainly what you're trying to solve. Okay. So this chapter is just introduction to that. So we'll have constant here, constant here, constant here, and some kind of function of x eventually, but today it will be zero. Good. Okay, now, before we take the example, there's a little bit of this, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna solve today's example and then use that example to do the same proof, because even if I prove it to you, this is a formal proof, it's going to just fly over your head. So I will introduce you the example first, and then I'll teach by example, okay? So here we go. So the first example I'm going to take is this. This is example one. Now, we solve this equation, y double prime plus y prime plus minus 6y is equal to 0. How about that? Okay. See, we try something, but here's the motivation. Let's just motivate ourselves. Because a lot of times it's in guess and check, and what we are going to guess is this thing, e to the rt, rx. But why? Where does that come from? You know what I'm saying? So this is, and this is not really rigorous mathematics, but I have met professors who taught this way, so it's not like I invented this out of thin air. Okay? Let's rewrite this with a differential operator. You guys are familiar with this, right? So the same thing? 
Okay. And then here's the thing that gets weird. Oh, can you swallow this? What? You can common factor y out of that thing? If you accept this, as just some kind of operator which does the performs the second derivative on function y, right? Why not? These are linear operators, what they call. You know what I'm saying? Just like distribute y into it. Anybody having questions or uneasiness about accepting this? I mean, this is not really rigorous like, analysis kind of thing, but this is a strong motivation, and many things are taught this way in applied math. Okay, it's about to get weirder, so you have to accept this. Are we good? Okay, then. Watch this. We factor. What? Where is the end of this? We can factor that thing? Yes and no. I'm going to give you, I mean, do the same thing again more formally, but this is at least a great motivation to use this, yes. Are you with me? Now, how can we make this thing zero now is the case, right? But if I, if I write this thing, if I reverse the order, so this, the way it's written is, I take this operator first, then this one second, it's like composite function idea now, where this is a function and that's a variable kind of thing. But if I reverse the order, are they the same thing? They gotta be, right? Because derivative operator, it doesn't care about the order. Once again, only reason this thing works is this is what mathematicians call the linear operators. Okay? Now, now here's the observation. Either then this is equal to zero, or this is equal to zero. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense to you? One of the two needs to be zero in order for this whole thing up here. For this thing to be zero, one of the two operations, either this is equal to zero, or if that's not equal to zero, then we do the second one, which is the same thing as that that is equal to zero. You know what I'm saying? With me so far? Okay, I know this is getting crazy. So let's just look at the first case. Now I'm going to distribute y in. Or the second one is this. Good. Say yes. Okay, wait. We have done this before. Like that, eh? And this one is dy over dx is equal to 2, 1. You know what I'm saying? The probable differential equation from DC? Do I really have to show you, or can I just jump up to the answer? Integrate ln and be assured plus c, and then y, long story short, plus or minus, or some kind of constant e to the negative 3x. Does that ring a bell? And likewise here, I right, just do it. dy over y is equal to 2x dx integrate ln y is equal to 2x plus c. This is capital C. And then y, we used to call it a, but I, I want to save a for something. So C E to the plus. Oh, why don't I call it C1 and C2? So far, so good. 
you see where this is going now, do you see why the motivation E to D something T? Right? So I'm going to now do this more formally, not like this, but this is gives you a great insight. Yeah, question? To the oh, oh my god, yes. The point. Like that, right? Okay, nice case. Good. Okay, now let's do it formally. Okay. So once again, what we had was this y double prime plus y prime minus 6y is equal to 0, 8. Now we try unzap, like German word, unzap, unzap. I forget it. I don't know how to spell I don't even know how to spell English. Why am I spelling German? It's a trial. It's a guess. Okay. I just say try. Y is equal to e to the R T R X. Oh, I'm so used to having T here. R X. Okay. And then in case still, if you're wondering where that comes from, you see, look at the solutions, right? These two. E to the R something. You know what I'm saying? And then with a C1 and C2 as a constant, two independent constants. Okay. We'll try this. So what we do is then y prime is equal to r times e to the rx chain rule. And then our y double prime is r squared e to the rx a, r being the sum constant. And that constant, of course, will be either negative 3 or 2. So we have to get the same thing. Now we plug all of this into the differential equation. So this one goes in here, so we have r squared e to the rx plus, and this one goes in here, so r e to the rx, and then this one goes in here, so minus 6 e to the rx is equal to 0. So far so good? And this thing factors nicely, e to the rx, common factor, and then you have r plus 3, and then r minus 2. Wait, why does that look so familiar? Well, that thing looks familiar because that's exactly this thing now, isn't it? Right? The differential operator that we factored. Are you getting lost or are you with me? Well, then, this is never equal to zero. So it's got to be either this or that is equal to zero. So we get r is equal to negative 3 or r is equal to positive 3. Get it? So we get our solution y is equal to some constant c1 e to the negative 3x or y is equal to e to the so some constant c2 e to the 2x. You know what I'm saying? Because y was e to the rx and r could be two different things. So we have two possible. Either one will work. Do you see that? Good. You with me? You see how to do this thing? How do you know this constant? Well, we have to remember the initial value last year. We don't have initial value, so this is it. General solution is as far as we can do. But when, we, when x is equal to 0, if we know any y value, then we can plug it in and find the, what the constants are. Good. So far, so good. Then, there was something that I wanted to prove, and proof was this. If we have two different solutions, say y1 and y2, and then combination of the two happens to be the solution, and here is the proof. Really? So it's not one or the other, but it's they're both, with the two separate, and I, that is why I already wrote as a c1 and c2. Really? So if you add the two, then that works as well? Yeah. Let's see if that works. So this proof, I'm going to really, instead of formal proof, because it's already there in the Dropbox mode, I'm going to see if I say y is equal to, let's say this is y1 and y2, y1 plus y2, c1 e to the negative 3x 
plus e2 e to the 2x. Will this work if I plug it back to the differential equation? And this is the whole thing about the linear operator thing. Only reason this works is because these are the differential operators that I did earlier here. This is known as a linear operator. It just distributes. So let's see if that is really true or not. Okay? So what I'm going to do is find y prime, which is chain rule, so negative 3, c1, e to the negative 3x, plus q, c2, e to the 2x, correct? Okay, and then y double prime, here is another negative 3 comes out, so we have 9, c1, e to the negative 3x, plus 4, c2, e to the 2x. You with me? Okay, let's plug everything back into our differential equation. So y double prime is this, 9c1 e to the negative 3x plus 4c2 e to the 2x, and then plus y prime. So I'm going to line it up, or oh, minus, minus 3c1 e to the negative 3x plus 2 c2 e to the 2x, so far so good. And then minus 6 of this. So why don't I distribute 6? So minus 6 c1 e to the negative 2x minus 6 c2 e to the 2x. And we need to add them up and see if we get 0 or not. Good. Let's see. 9. Oh, these are like terms, eh? 9 minus 3 minus 6 is 0. And this one, 4 plus 2 minus 6 is equal to 0. See, it works. Pretty cool, huh? So, let's review. The way we solve this kind of differential equation is just we really guess and check on that. Our try is e to the rx. Plug it in, well, take a derivative, second derivative, plug all of them in, and it gives you algebra 2. You get it? And then you work that out, and then you just present it as a combination of the two like this. Say yes. Okay, then. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have put C1 and C2 there because it's just that, but you know, the constants give you the exact. It satisfies the differential equation. This we know from DC. There's usually a constant. Okay, shall we take another example then? Yeah, let's do that. The next example I have is this. Example two is y is equal to where is it? Uh, yeah. No, not that one. That one. 4y double prime plus 12y prime plus 9y. Same idea, eh? Okay. So, which y now? y is equal to e to the of x. Good. Which means y is r e to is exactly the same. So we, after that, it becomes a autopilot. You don't have to write this thing anymore. And then plug it in. We'll distribute 4. Okay. So what we have is this thing in here. So 4 r squared e to the rx plus 12 this thing in r e to the rx plus 9 e to the rx. Eh? And that's factored. Is this how it factors? Too much algebra? Name? Are we good? Okay, well then, we only have one R. Ooh, 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 right? So what do we present? Y is equal to e to the negative 3 over 2 x 
But then you get a feeling that we are supposed to get two and only one, right? I need a space for constant at least C1. And here's a theorem in the book that tells you when that happens, this is also a solution. You just multiply the same thing by x and really? Okay, that's this one. So first case was this. We did this already. D squared minus 4ac. Right, positive and you have two distinct solutions, right? But this case, this is the now, the middle case. We have a uh, one double multiplicity two. You know what I'm saying? So when that happens, they say this is the case, right? You multiply the second one with x, and here's a proof. So here's a formal proof. But instead of giving this to you, it's so much easier for you to understand and follow. If I just prove it with this, it's got to work with the same thing. This is just R. You know what I'm saying? So why don't I check if this thing showing back here will work or not? Because like X here is a little difficult to believe that this will work. Let's see. And then proof goes almost the same thing. Okay, this way. So we'll see. So Y is... Oh, I already have it here, so... Might as well just say y prime, we check this. So we have negative 3 over 2, c1, e3, negative 3 over 2, x. And then minus, oh, this is a chain rule now, isn't it? I mean, chain rule, product rule now, isn't it? So u and v, you differentiate with respect to x first. So plus, do I want to do that? Yeah, let's do that. Plus c2. And then e to the negative 3 over 2x superseded. And the second one, d prime. So we have minus 3 over 2 c2x e to the negative 3 over 2x. You with me? Okay, we'll find y double prime. Y double prime here, another chain rule. So we have 9 over 4 c1 e to the negative 3 over 2x. And this one, this just comes out, so minus 3 over 2, C2, e to the negative 3 over 2, x8. And then this one, another product rule, right? So let's do that methodically. So first one, just with respect to x, so 3 over 2, C2, e to the negative 3 over 2, x. With me? Say yes. Okay. And the other one is plus, this thing comes down, so 9 over 4, C2, X, E to the negative 3 over 2, X. Are you with me? Okay, so I'm going to shove it back into the differential equation, which was 4, Y double prime plus 12, Y prime plus 9, Y, right? Let's see if that thing gives us zero. Oh, I have a computer. I can actually copy and paste instead of. So we have this thingy. Oh my God, do I have to rewrite it? One advantage of teaching it with a computer is this. So we have this thingy. We have to multiply that by four now, don't we? Let's distribute four. I think we can do that, right? I think it's easy enough. So we have, all I have to do is just get rid of these coefficients. Uh, wait, my math dropped. So put that in. So let's do it. So 4 times this thing is just 9. Good. 4 times this thing is, we have 6. 4 times this thing is 6. And then 4 times this thing is 9. Are you, are you with me? Okay, now we have to distribute 12 to this, so let me first copy it over. I think it... And put it here. Somewhere there. And then I'll distribute 12. 
I need more space. Didn't want to do that. Ah. Okay, this is really, really 12. So it's here. This thing times 12. You have 18. This thing times 12 is just 12. This thing times 12 is 18 again, hey? You with me? Okay, and lastly, 9 times that thing. Okay, that one I just write it. So plus. 9 times c1 e to the negative 3 over 2x plus 9 times c2 e to the negative 3 over 2x. You with me? And uh, will they all cancel out and give you 0? Let's see. Okay. This thingy, 9, 9, these are like terms, right? And negative 18. So these, these three cancel. Okay, let's look at this. These are like terms with the C2 e to the negative, right? This, whoops, I think I'm missing a sign. Oh yeah, I forgot X, right? Ah, oh, dang it. This is not the like term with that thing. I should have stuck with a uh, copy and paste, right? Okay, now let's see. I'm going to cancel it. Okay. So negative 6, negative 6, positive 12. These guys cancel. You know what I'm saying? And then can you see whatever is left? 9, negative 18, 9 with the x term. They will cancel out beautifully. Check. Huh. So this theorem is true, isn't it? See, when you put first one and then the other one, x times that first one with a different constant, and then if you work it out, it works out exactly the same. It gives you zero anyway. Okay, then case. What happens if you get imaginary roots? Okay. And let's do that one. Okay, so my third case is this. I'm going to do that with red now. Example 3. So we have y double prime minus 6y prime plus 13y. This will give us the imaginary solution, wouldn't it? As before, we'll use this as answer. I sh probably should try equal sign or no. I probably should put C in front, but you know what I'm saying, it's the same thing. They all satisfy, so one is just as good. So Y, but Y prime is R e to the Rx, and Y double prime is R squared e to the Rx. A. So yes. Let's plug them in into our differential equation. So what we have is R squared e to the Rx minus 6r e to the rx plus 13 e to the rx is equal to 0, a. Eh? And this thing factors as before, but we get stuck here. Do you know what I'm saying? Because this thing does not factor anymore. Already formula. This is never equal to zero, so R needs to be negative six, negative negative six, six plus or minus e squared thirty-six minus four times is that fifty-two? I know I looked it up. Okay, over well that plus or minus. Good. Okay, let's simplify this. So, what is this thing? That's 16 now, isn't it? Still with me? Oh, that 
comes out of the square root nicely, or right, plus or minus 4i. So what we have is 3 plus or minus 2i. Like Say yes. Okay. So my solution here is this. y is equal to c1 e to d 3 plus 2i x plus c2 e to d 3 minus 2i x. Eh? Those are two distinct solutions. This is horrible, right? So let's develop a nicer version, okay? Here's a nicer version. I'm going to separate it. C1, e to d, 3x, e to d, 2ix. Still the same thing? Right? Rule of exponent. Plus C2, e to d, 3x minus 2ix. What? What am I doing? No. I want to separate it. e to d minus 2ix. Is it the same thing? Say yes. Common factor e to the 3x. Right? And then, what do we have left? c1 e to d 2ix plus c2 e to d negative 2ix. And you're thinking, how is that any prettier? Right? Can anybody imagine what I'm going to do now? I hope you guys remember this. Toilet formula. Right? Plug him in. So let's see what we got. E to the 3x. And then this is C1. And then cosine 2x plus i sine 2x. Eh? So far with me. And the second one is plus C2. And then cosine negative 2x, which is just same as 2x, and then sine negative, so minus here. Are you with me? Okay, collect the like terms, cosine and sine separately. So what I have is, here's a cosine, let's see. Here's a cosine and here's a cosine. So coefficient is c1 plus c2, okay? You with me? Too much algebra? Here's i sine, i sine, right? So we'll say i, and then c1 minus c2, just reviewing, and then we'll just say sine plus. Still with me? Okay, so this, now we can say, why, why did I write 3? E to d, 3x, and then we can say, let's call that thing a. And then cosine 2x, and let's call that thing the imaginary thing b. So this is b. Uh, wrong color. This whole thing is b. You know what I'm saying? This thing is A. So B. And then, sign to us. Oh, pretty, right? Now, you might be wondering, yeah, but, 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 can you just, wouldn't that create complex coefficients? Right? It could, but then, has it occurred to you these are complex coefficients to begin with? Right, because if you have this such an answer with the complex numbers in it, of course your coefficients are complex. So it happens, so this is a complex coefficient, both of them. But if you do it this way, with the if your initial conditions are real, 
and these coefficients on the differential equations are real. Turns out A and B are real, not complex. Right? If you do it this way, you actually are dealing with complex coefficients, but those I part cancels out if you do it this way. So it turns out. So more the reason to do it this way. Okay, and then you're wondering, do we have to do this each time? Answer is no. Well, maybe I recommend you do it once or twice, but it always works out this way. So you're good, C1 and C2 with this, and then still call this C1 and C2. Like, let's not do that, that's done. It's some other constant. So I reserve A and B for this, if it's complex. Because A, B, C1 plus C2, B meaning I times C1 minus C2. You get it? So this thing will work out each time for this simple time. But the name is homogeneous ordinary differential equation. You get it? With a constant coefficient. Any questions? Okay. So lastly, I'll show you whatever they have in the book. This, this, this is the case, right? You see they call it C1 and C2. Let's not do that, right? And then like beta, whatever. We'll just do it my way. This is kind of what I did just now. And it'll work. Solve the initial value problem. Okay, yesterday we left it as constant C1 and C2 or A and B. Now, then I said, we need some initial value to figure out what that constant is. Exactly the same as last year. However, the difference is you need two initial values. This is second order, okay? So you need additional information. You'll find out why you need the second order. So typically, you have these two examples. Well, let's zoom into the first one. What we're going to need is the initial value of the function and initial value of the derivative. Okay? The other way this can be given to you is what's called the boundary value problems. You can have uh, the value of the function at two different points, one at zero and the other one at one. Okay? You can do it that way, but typically this is more common. One, because you have two constants, right? C1 and C2, or A and B. So what you need is two different, this becomes a system of equation. You get it? So we have two different information. So this is typically called the initial value problems. So that's so good. Okay, this is a little bit of a review from yesterday, because we have solved this problem before, but let's do it again. So y, we try this. y is equal to e to the or x is our ansatz, okay? I'm not gonna really find the derivative because we did it yesterday. We just plug it in. So if you take second derivative, this becomes r squared e to the rx, good? And then this one becomes r times e to the rx, and then minus six, and then e to the rx is equal to zero. How are we doing so far? Okay then. Now, we factor it, so we have e to the rx out here, then we have r minus 2, and then r plus 3. So, for so good. So, e to the rx is never equal to 0, so that tells us r is equal to 2, or r is equal to negative 3. So, good. Now, then, so we have our solution, which is always the combination of the two, and I showed you why the combination of the two both work. So our solution is y is equal to c1 e to the 2x rx plus c2 and e to the negative 3x. So far, so good. Now we use initial condition here. Let's use this one first. So when t is equal to t, I am so used to t. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, and then we substitute that here. Okay, so the left hand side is supposed to be 1, and this, if you substitute 0, e to the 0 is 1, so you have c1, and then this becomes 0, so we plus c2. That pretty looks weird. Yeah. I'm going to erase it. Negative 3x. So if 
for Sogan. Okay, and then you take the, since we have this kind of initial condition, we have to take the derivative of this thing. Okay. So what we have is y prime here is equal to 2 c1 equal to 2x. And then that chain rule, so minus 3 c2 e to the negative 3 x. Still good? Then we substitute here the second initial value, which is y prime at 0 is equal to 0. So the left hand side becomes 0, and the right hand side becomes 2 c1 minus 3 c2. How about that? So between this one, between this line, and this line, we have systems of equation. Good. Now, can I just trust you that you know how to do this and not really show you C1 is equal to 3 fifths and C2 will be equal to 2 fifths? Come on, try to go. You're okay, right? Tell me you're okay. So our final answer, therefore, our y is equal to 3 fifths e to the 2x, and then plus 2 fifths e to the negative 3x. That's that. Good. Okay, any questions before I move on to the second problem? Okay, let's move on to the second problem then. We have this kind of initial value problem. Okay, once again, we try y is equal to e to the rx. Plug it in here, so second derivative. So what we will have is r squared and then e to the rx. And this is just e to the rx is equal to zero. Are we good? So we factor it to the r x out, and then we have r squared plus 1 is equal to 0. That means this is now equal to 0, so r is equal to plus or minus i. Eh? So, yes. so plugging it back in, so our y is equal to c1 e to the i x plus c2 e to the negative i x, okay? But what we did yesterday, and we're going to skip to the end, but using this identity, e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. Okay, and then you can verify it if you want to, but what it turns out to be, according to yesterday's stuff, is it becomes sine and cosine. a cosine x plus b sine x. Okay, at the moment, we don't know whether this a and b are complex or real. Okay, and we don't know the c1 and c2 are real or complex either. And it turns out the c1 and c2 are definitely complex. But yesterday, I told you, when you have a real coefficients and the real initial value, this a and b will turn out to be real. You can kind of see it is, but let's just verify that because we are finding these things anyway. So initial value y at 0 is equal to 2. So you want to substitute that in. Then what happens is the left hand side becomes 2. And then once you plug in 0, sine x dies, you just have a. Oh, a is equal to 2. So conveniently, Plug it back in and we take a derivative of this. So y prime now is equal to, a is equal to 2 already. Take a derivative, so negative 2 sine of x plus b, and this one becomes cosine of x. Good. Now we take this second initial value at 0 is equal to 3. So y prime at 0 is equal to 3, and then we want to substitute that in. So left hand side becomes not zero, three, three here, and then sine dies, and that's b. Ah, b is equal to three. Isn't that convenient? So our uh, finally final answer becomes our y is equal to two cosine of x 
plus B sin of X. How about that? See, lo and behold, indeed A and B are both real numbers. More the reason to convert it to cosine and sine instead of going in this form. 